Hey, what's up there, Dear Soul First? Today I'm going to show you how you can diagnose and fix a no crank, no start problem with your car. And to clarify, a no crank, no start situation is when you put the key in the ignition, turn it to the start position, and then nothing happens. All right, so about eight or nine times out of 10 when this happens, it means uh, there's a problem with your car's battery. So a good first step would be to do a visual inspection of your battery terminals and your battery terminals connectors. Make sure they're not damaged or loose. Also look for signs of excessive corrosion. If this uh, corrosion buildup is excessive, it's not going to allow enough current to go from your battery to start, therefore not allowing your car to start. Next, I would get my multimeter and put it on 20 volts. And we choose 20 volts because of the measurement of this 12 volt battery is going to be less than 20 volts. Next, we put our black test lead on the negative post and the red one on the positive post. And the voltage we're looking for is 12.4 uh, and above. As you can see, we got 12.6, which means this is a fully charged battery. Now, if your readings are a lot lower than that, then you probably have found the culprit. You need to take this battery out and take it to your local auto parts store where they'll uh, recharge it and then test it. And it's important to do this properly. You can't just get a jump start, go for a drive, and hope that your alternator recharges it. Your alternator alone cannot fully recharge this, and then you'll be back at square one. So the next step would be to do a voltage drop test from our battery post to our uh, battery terminal connectors. And we can do that by keeping our settings the same on our multimeter. And then we take our red lead and put it on our battery post. And then we take our black lead and put it on our battery terminal connector. And the number we see here is going to be the voltage we're losing when we go from our battery post to our battery terminal connector, which is this piece here. And you don't want to see a voltage drop of more than 0.5 or in other words, half a volt. All right, here we go. All right, there you can see we, have, we lose nothing when we go from our battery terminal to our uh, battery terminal connector, which is a good sign. It means that there is no excessive corrosion around this post. But look what happens when I put this test lead on the area we, where we do have some corrosion. There, as you can see, we lose about 1.35 volts uh, when we go from our battery post to the side where we do have some corrosion. Now this corrosion is only on this one little area here, but if it was excessive and it was all over, then we would be having problem starting our vehicle. But it is something that needs to be addressed before it gets excessive. And we do the same thing on the negative side. And as you can see, we have no voltage drop when we go from our uh, battery post to our battery terminal connector. So if we do have enough voltage at our battery terminals and also our battery terminal connectors past the voltage drop test, what I do next is to get my load tester and load test the battery. Basically, it's the way this load tester works is that it puts a current draw on your battery simulating the draw your starter puts on your battery. So we set it up by attaching these connectors to our negative and positive posts on the battery. Next, we press down on this button here, and that's going to put a load on our battery, and then we take our measurement. And since this battery has about 500 cold cranking amps, uh, we don't want this uh, dial to go below 500 on this green scale on here. Hopefully, you guys can see. All right, that's about six seconds, and the needle is in roughly in the 500 area. And for those people that don't have a multimeter or a load tester, just try it. If you can get a jump start, and then your car starts, then obviously your problem is your battery and or your battery terminal connectors. What you can do to solve it is to replace your battery or just get it, take it to your local auto parts store and they'll, they'll test it or maybe recharge it for you. And then clean your uh, battery terminal connectors with uh, some wire brushes or maybe sandpaper and then reconnect it to your uh, new or recharged battery and then you should be good to go. And if we still haven't found our problem, I next go to our uh, relays and fuses uh, related to our starting system. You'll usually have a starter relay in the fuse box in your engine compartment. And there's sometimes a diagram on your uh, fuse box cover that tells you which one it is. And on this car, it's going to be this one right here. So then I'll just go ahead and remove it. And then if I can find a relay that's exactly like this one, uh, maybe like a horn relay that I can verify it works properly by testing my horn, then I'll swap that one for this one and then try starting the car. Or in other words, whatever relay you decide to swap for this, you want to make sure it's got nothing to do with your engine control modules or your starting your ignition system. But really, the best way you can verify that whether this relay is good or not is to uh, do some tests on this using your multimeter. I've done a very extensive video on testing uh, relays. I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen where you can click on it. Uh, in that video, I go in high detail how you can test one of these, even if it doesn't come with a graph on it like we have here. Also, if on this diagram you see fuses related to your ignition system, make sure you check them. Also, you have a fuse panel inside your uh, passenger cabin that probably will have a fuse related to your ignition system. So you want to make sure you check and test that fuse as well. And if you still haven't found your problem, what we're going to do next is to start concentrating on our starter. Make sure that it has a good enough ground and that it receives both power and a signal, start signal from our ignition switch. 
Now I've done a video on how you can uh, bench test one of these and in that and go and uh, detail exactly how this works uh, and I'll put a link to it right here on the side of the screen. I'll also put a link to it in the description box. But uh, just quickly, your starter is grounded through your engine. It mounts to your engine by these two bolts and it gets its ground from there. Next, it will always have a post where it receives constant 12 volt uh, battery voltage supplied to it. And then it will have a trigger post where 12 volts is supplied to it whenever you're in your car and you turn your ignition switch to the start or crank position. And then when you turn your switch to the crank position, it, it supplies 12 volts through this wire to your motor, which in turn will turn this gear and turn your flywheel and then crank your engine. That's all given if you have a good working starter motor and solenoid assembly. And here's a closer look and this is the connection where we get the constant 12 volts from our battery. And this connector is for our one wire uh, trigger voltage that we get from our ignition switch when we turn the key to the crank or start position. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is to make sure our starter has a proper connection to ground. And we do that by setting our multimeter settings to ohms and I'm going to choose this last setting where uh, we're going to hear a beep when we have ground. Next we'll attach one test lead to our uh, battery negative side and we grab our other test lead and we're going to attach the casing of our starter motor and we hear, if you hear a beep that means we have ground. There we go, we got uh, hardly any readings here as far as resistance to ground goes and we're hearing a beep so we do have ground in this starter motor. Now since your starter motor is grounded to your engine, if you do this test and you don't have ground, you want to just uh, quickly just wiggle your starter, make sure it's not loose. Also look for signs of corrosion where your uh, starter meets your uh, engine. And if those check out fine, it means that your engine ground to chassis is probably loose or damaged. Now your engine is grounded to your chassis uh, in multiple points usually. Here's one example right here. And you simply have to do some research and find out on uh, your car's make and model where are the grounding points for your engine to your chassis. And next it's time to see whether we get a constant 12 volts supplied to our starter motor assembly. To this post right here. So we get our multimeter, put it on 20 volts. Ground one test lead. And then we're going to touch this terminal with our other test lead. And then our multimeter should show battery voltage here. There we go. As you can see, we got 12.6, so we verified that we are indeed getting a constant supply of uh, battery voltage to our starter assembly. And if you don't have battery voltage supplied to your starter assembly, it means that the cable that goes from the positive post on your battery to, the, to your starter assembly is probably pinched or damaged somewhere. And usually on the cable from your uh, battery to your starter assembly there are no relays or connectors even it's usually a straight shot um, in fact on this car it's probably easy to see you know as you can see you got, you got a couple of cables going out from the positive post on our battery it loops around there and uh, it comes out here and there's a cable that goes to our uh, solenoid or starter assembly right here next it's time to see whether we're getting 12 volts Supply to this trigger post when we uh, turn the key to the crank position. First we'll remove this connector, grab our multimeter, keep it on the voltage setting and then ground our uh, black test lead. And then we attach our other test lead to this connector or you can also back probe this connector if it's easier for you. Next we're going to get in our car and then turn our ignition switch all the way to the crank position and we should have 12 volts here. Make sure you put that relay back in the fuse box if you took it out to test it. And if you do get 12 volts at that trigger wire, it means that our starter assembly is getting all it needs uh, to crank the engine over, uh, but it's not. You know, we have a good battery, we have good connection, it has good ground, it gets a constant supply of battery voltage, and it gets 12 volts on a trigger wire when we turn the key to the crank position, but it's not working. So, next logical step would be to take out the starter motor and do a bench test. Again, I've done a video on how you can bench test your starter motor assembly. Uh, again, I'll put a link right here and in the description box if you're interested. Alright, now before we remove our starter, it's a good idea to make sure that you don't have a mechanical failure inside your engine. Because you could have pistons that are seized or valves that are broken and are uh, mechanically stopping your engine from being turned over by your starter. And you can usually verify that your engine is uh, able to turn by just getting a socket on your uh, crankshaft bolt down there and then manually turning your engine. But if you don't get 12 volts at that trigger wire, it means that that circuit from your uh, ignition switch all the way to that trigger wire, there's a fault somewhere. Now the components that make out that circuit are going to be your uh, ignition switch. Now when I say ignition switch, I'm not talking about this. This is your ignition lock cylinder. Your ignition switch usually goes in the back of your ignition lock cylinder assembly and it's the electrical component 
of uh, your entire ignition lock cylinder and switch assembly. You'll have wires going in and out of that switch. And when you turn your key to the crank position, you'll have 12 volts coming out of a wire that will go from here to your uh, neutral safety switch if you have an automatic or your uh, clutch pedal position sensor if you have a stick shift or a manual transmission. Now your neutral safety switch is usually located on your transmission if you have an automatic and when it gets that signal uh, from your ignition, ignition switch, it will only let that signal pass from there if your transmission is either in park or neutral. This is obviously for safety reasons so that you can't start your car in drive or reverse and therefore your car won't jolt forward or back without you being prepared for it. And a clutch pedal position sensor works in the same manner which is to, it's not going to let you start the car unless you uh, press the clutch to the floor. Then from those switches the signal gets to travel to your uh, starter relay which is this guy here that we went over already. Now this was a very basic circuit on this side and uh, there's variations of this but it's uh, you know if you have a problem on that circuit then again you know check the relay then your ignition switch make sure voltage is coming out of that switch on the wire it's supposed to be and last but not least check your uh, neutral safety switch or your clutch pedal position sensor. And as if that wasn't enough, there's always the chance that you're having a problem with your anti-theft system on your car. If you, especially if you have a newer car, some of the newer cars, actually almost all the newer cars, they have a chip in the key. And they have a, you know, a system where your uh, computer senses the resistance in that chip. And if it doesn't sense the correct resistance, it's not going to let you start the car. So you could have potentially a problem with uh, your anti-theft system. But if you don't, then this would be the correct procedure for diagnosing problems with your starting system. Now I'm going to make another more detailed video going over how your starting system works and how you can uh, properly test your ignition switch, your neutral safety switch, all the wiring and the circuit that uh, is involved with your starting system and also how you can diagnose problems with, uh, with an intermittent starting problem and uh, but you know I'm going to just try to keep this video short for people that are just having starting issues and just want to solve that problem as quickly as possible but if you want to learn more as this, you stay tuned and watch that video, especially if you want to learn how to do this. So with that said, hope this video helps people out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.